Aloha. I am your host, Winston Welch, and I am delighted that you are joining us again today for this session of Out and About, a show where we explore a variety of topics, organizations, and events with the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. As a disclaimer, any views or opinions expressed by me are strictly my own and not connected with any organization. Today, I am making a special dedication to my dear friend, Baby Joe Jacobs. You may call him Joe. He's an avid bicyclist and physical fitness champion. He's an all-around renaissance man and a general good guy, and he watches my show. So that is even more important, <laughs> but uh, it's good to give your pals a shout out, especially when it's in a topic that's interesting for them, which this one is because today joining me in the school is uh, in the studio today is another all-around great guy, Daniel Alexander. He's the co-executive director of the Hawaii Bicycling League. To talk about the benefits of bicycling, how we can add bicycling to our lives, what resources are available uh, to help us do so, and what current projects and programs are currently planned to make cycling safer and more accessible, how we can support these bicycle-friendly actions, and the Century Ride that is coming up this weekend. So welcome to the show today, and thanks so much for being my guest. Yeah, Winston, thank you for that, so much for having me. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here, and you know, bicycling, this is a perfect city for bicycling. I think I were flat, everything is pretty close in. Um, but it's not, it's not all, always perfect, even though it's a perfect city for it. So your organization helps with that. Yeah, so um, it is a great place for bicycling. And a lot of people do choose to bike, but many more could if we have the right ingredients in place. And that's a combination of changes to the roads, but it's also changes to behavior. Uh, it's empowering people to, to feel safe and confident cycling, to know how they would, say, commute to work, how they deal with wardrobe, et cetera. Um, and uh, it's education to drivers so that they're sharing the road as safely as possible. Um, and it's uh, encouragement activities like rides. So uh, my organization is uh, doing all those sorts of things to try to um, get more people out cycling and, and appreciating uh, this wonderful mode that is healthy for you. Um, it's healthy for your pocketbook. Um, it's better for the environment. It reduces congestion. It means you don't have to deal with parking headaches. Just so many benefits to it. And when you, so your organization deals with advocacy, education, events. You got a ton of resources on your website. Let's get that out there right there in case people want to follow along. Yeah, so Hawaii Bicycling League, hbl.org. H B is in boy, L.org. Yeah, okay, so you, if people can go there, find a ton of information that we're going to uh, cover today. Uh, but uh, so part of this, uh, tell us about the organization itself. Uh, are you a volunteer? Are you staff, paid staff? Um, how many folks are there and how long have you been around? Yeah, so Hawaii Bicycling League founded in 1975, so before I was born. Uh, but now I get to share the, the co-executive directorship with uh, Malia Harunaga. Um, and uh, so we have uh, five full-time paid staff. Okay. Um, and then we're benefited by tons of volunteers. So for example, the Honolulu Century Ride coming up, we'll have 340 people help us in some capacity. Wow. So our work, uh, whether it's um, in our events or in education advocacy, it's multiplied by our volunteers and then our members. So we're a member-based organization. Those members pay an annual due and they get some benefits like discounts at local bike shops. But most of all, they get to be part of what we're doing. They get to be our constituents um, as we go and we try to push for positive changes. Uh, so we have about 1,800 uh, members and they're primarily here on Oahu, but also statewide. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of in a nutshell what the organization is. Um, you mentioned um, our, our three pillars. That's um, education, advocacy and events. And really those are the areas that we're working and we're trying to push, push the needle and uh, make it where um, it's safer and we get more people cycling. And uh, inside of Honolulu, we've got about, a, uh, let's just focus on Honolulu for a second. We've got a million people here. What percentage of them actually have a bike or ride a bike and how does that compare with other cities in the country or let's go the world, let's go Denmark is the, probably the gold standard or the platinum standard um, yeah and how, how are we in Honolulu so um, so the data that we do have is around commute uh, we don't have data about um, necessarily kids riding to school people doing recreational rides people riding to the store um, all those trips that are, are not work related um, so at a work level for the whole island of Oahu that million people you're talking, it's about one and a half percent of people that are using a bike as their primary way of getting around um, so as you said, that's, it's, it's a significant number, but we do know there are many more that are using it for those other things I was talking about, getting to school, going to the store, going to the beach, just going out on a recreational ride. So um, it's, it's many thousands that are, are riding, 
Um, but if you compare us just on the commute level to some other uh, peer places, so in Portland, about 8% of people commute uh, by bike as their primary commute mode. Um, you go to Copenhagen, which is, uh, like I said, the gold standard, um, and it's 50%. Over, over half of all people are using a bike as their primary way of getting to and from work. Is Portland the highest city in America? Uh, so for a large city, it is. There are some smaller cities uh, like Boulder, Colorado, or Davis, Sacramento, um, that have you know 20% um, of all their uh, work trips are occurring by bike. Okay, so we've got a lot of room for growth for folks that want to hop on a bike and, and get out there. And to that end, uh, you have a, a plethora of, of uh, resources on your really well-designed website. And part of that I, I, I want to pull, talk about is the presentations that you give. So if we can go to that slide for presentation, you've got a whole bunch on there. Let's see, we got the Beginner's Guide to Bicycling, uh, Biking in Hawaii, Infrastructure Updates, or they're painting the green stripes. Um, so we, yep. uh, you know, we're, we're out there and we're trying to get the message of why bicycling is a good thing. Yeah, and how we can make it as safe as possible. So like the beginner's guide to bicycling, that's one that we can do like a brown bag in a, uh, you, you have an office, there's 15 of you, and we can sit down with you at lunch and talk about, hey, why would you consider bicycling? And how would you consider bicycling? So um, there are a lot of things that hold people back from doing it. They're thinking about, okay, well, how am I gonna deal with my wardrobe when I arrive to work? Um, where am I gonna lock my bicycle? Um, how am I gonna identify a safe route? So we start to walk them through, okay, these are, are how other people deal with those things and um, get a, where we shed those barriers away where they can really start thinking about it as a meaningful part of, part of their life and start to bicycle uh, commute or, or bicycle in any capacity. And people can just go on your website, they can find an interesting presentation and then they could, there's a drop down menu that asks to schedule a presentation. Yep. And, it, and so would that be typical where, where an office says, uh, could you please come and talk to our workers about this? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and then we also, I'll just, one other one I'll point there is a walk, bike, drive. Mm -hmm. um, so that one is more, it's not just bicycling. It's, um, it's oriented towards people walking, people biking, and people driving, about how to stay as safe as possible when they're doing those things and how to keep others safe when they're doing those things. And that was one thing that we were talking about right before the show was that you, you have also as part of, uh, I'm guessing it's kind of a city or federal grant on make, uh, maybe it's complete streets, but making the streets more safe for pedestrians as well. So that's, that's kind of uh, expanded your mission a little bit, as, yeah. but it's just similar. You want safe streets for bikers and, and walkers. Yeah, so we're the Hawaii Bicycling League, but we do a lot of pedestrian advocacy stuff. So uh, as, as I'm sure many viewers are aware, um, we have a terrible situation of pedestrian safety. Um, and there are most vulnerable people out there, people walking, people bicycling. They don't have airbags. They don't have crumple zones. Um, they really count on um, keeping themselves as safe as possible and that the, the people driving around them are behaving in a way that, um, that is uh, yielding to them that essentially is not hitting them. Um, so we do a lot of education around that, trying to um, get everyone on, on the same page um, so we, we can just navigate the streets and share the streets as safely as possible. Share the streets. And that's one thing is we, we saw each other, was it last week or two weeks ago, uh, for the presentation from the fellow from, uh, was he from Boston, and talking about uh, low-speed collisions, people have a chance of surviving, but when you've got higher speeds, it drastically reduces. And yeah. also how people behave in their cars and... It's a really great presentation. What was that yeah, one? Uh, Jeff Speck. Jeff, Jeff Speck. He, he did a talk here. He's an expert on walkability. Um, yeah, just one of the things you mentioned. Speed is a really important thing. If there's one thing that we could tell anyone that drives out there is drive slower. Yeah. Because your uh, response time, your break time, your field of vision, and so all those things affect whether you hit someone or not, whether you get in a crash or not. Yeah. But then, the faster you're going, the severity increases exponentially. Yeah. yeah. The relationship is like, if you're going 40, there's like a one in 10 chance that yeah. someone would survive getting hit, a pedestrian would survive. Yeah. And if you go down to 20, it goes to nine in 10 chance. You go down to 10, it's pretty different. Much. And really our streets are so crowded here, you shouldn't be going, you, I can hardly go faster than 15 most of the time. So yeah, it's, it's about increasing awareness for drivers to share the road, share bars, um, you know, and just educating people on how we have these new bike lanes that are on King Street or, or wherever they're, South Street and wherever they are. And that's part of the education that you do. So we got another slide up here on, on this. And I think some of these speak to that, like the protected bike lanes, 
um, that we've got here. Yeah. And uh, can you speak to some of these? So, uh, these so things? you mentioned uh, King Street, uh, the King Street protected bike lane in South Street. So that's something that they've been doing in uh, Denmark. We, we mentioned Copenhagen. They've been doing that since you know the 1960s. And finally, we brought that design to Hawaii in 2014. And it was a new thing at that point, the idea that you have parking and you then have a bike lane that's physically protected. And yeah. then when a motorist is going to make a, a turn, they need to be looking out in that bike lane and yielding um, in those intersections. Um, so it was something new. So we did a lot of education to try to build up that awareness. Uh, but you know, these protected bike lanes, if I could emphasize a little bit, um, it appeals to a broader range of folks, not just you know, folks like me that say, I, I love to bike. I'm going to figure out a way to do it. But there are a lot of people that say, hey, it would be nice to bike. But I, I, don't, I look out there, and I don't feel like, yeah. like I feel safe there. Yeah. We call them the interested but concerned. And it, uh, studies, surveys, including here in Hawaii, have shown about two-thirds of people would like to bicycle at some level, but need a really safe-feeling environment to do so. And the protected bike lanes are really key um, to, to getting that. So I'm, I'm merging from the education to advocacy. But that's part of why we push so hard for these protected bike lanes is because it can really uh, grow the percentage of people that are, that are cycling where it includes uh, folks that are less experienced, uh, children, et cetera. And I think Mr. Speck spoke to that. What was his TED Talk that he mentioned? Uh, just in case people uh, want to do that. Can't, can't. Just Google so, Jeff, Jeff Speck. Speck. Uh, Jeff Speck. TED Talk. S-P-E-C-K. -S -S I'm guessing he was, he was reasonably uh, also entertaining. But in there, he did talk about these and we call them protected bike lanes, and he showed us a picture of one before where they had just the bike lane, but it was right next to traffic. And he said the one thing he wished that he had done more of or knew better was to put that parking lane and then the bike lane and then the sidewalk because it does create, and it also helps pedestrians feel safe too because you have a row of cars that are parked that act as the barrier. So that's the protection yeah. you're alluding to. I saw in Vancouver they have like uh, those concrete, um, you know, uh, barriers, which uh, not as attractive, but I guess they, they have more, uh, the, maybe it was a space consideration there, but we're all learning, I guess, and, and how it works, you know, in the best practices around the world. So in some of your, in some of your, also your uh, events that you got, you got Hawaii Bicycling Law, so you're teaching the bicyclists also how to be a good bicyclist and a safe bicyclist and and just pay attention to the rules of the road as well from that perspective. Yeah, so we have a education starting from Keiki all the way up to Kapuna. Yeah, so our, our largest single program is our bike ed program. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's oriented at fourth graders. So we have uh, two box trucks that go around the island and they teach in schools, spend a week with fourth graders, um, teaching them the basics of, uh, it's essentially road safety. It's focused on bikes, but um, knowing how to yield, to look before you cross the street, um, to signal your intentions, um, to, to, to know your place, to go um, with the direction of traffic. So it's a lot of really fundamentals on bike safety, but also traffic safety in general. Um, and then uh, we have uh, several classes for adults. We I actually have we got this on the next uh, uh, slide oh, here. These are some, ahead no, no, it's okay. <laughs> we got some cycling workshops here. So you were talking about the learning to ride. And so I thought that's because maybe some people don't know how to ride a bike. Is that... Yeah, or they haven't ridden in many years. So uh, the, the old uh, saying that uh, it's like learning to ride, it's like biking again, or you, you, you don't forget how to ride a bike or something You like don't, that. but sometimes you need a little, you need the welcoming, positive environment where you feel safe and comfortable to do it. Okay. Um, so our adult learn to ride. So it's, uh, it's never too late to learn, tell you that much. We've had uh, people that are very elder um, learn to ride with us. Um, you take a day, take a do two days with us. Um, we do it in this a nice uh, protected environment where you don't have to worry about traffic or, or really anyone else. Um, and you just uh, you give it your best, and most people will come away after one or two days, um, and they'll know how to ride. And do you have, uh, like, kind of, I, I want to call them like adult tricycles that, that are available as well for people? So our senior cycling program, which okay. we go all the way to the Kapuna. I think we got a picture of that one uh, up here. Uh, uh, maybe the, uh, right after that was senior cycling. Which is maybe the there yeah. they are. Oh, I see. Oh, so those are so yeah, the, these are uh, recumbent uh, tricycles, recumbent trikes. Okay. Uh, so if you have a balance issue, yeah. or if you've never ridden a bike yeah. and you don't feel you're up to, to uh, learning how to um, get the balance down, um, you can ride one of these. If you have a basic level of physical fitness, 
Um, we'll work with you. We have different levels. We have three different levels, an introductory level and all the way to an advanced. Um, and they're for folks we call 50 and better. Okay. Um, and uh, you can join them when the workshop does. Uh, people love them. You know, the feedback we get. You know, there's a beauty to riding a bicycle, moving yourself, and having the wind pass by as you glide through. Um, it really is a beautiful thing. So, oh, it is. And it, to get, like you said, it lets you get out and go different places and see things at a, at a different experience level than being in a car where you're very contained. It's the same for walking. You see so much more and experience things how it's meant to be. So these classes, uh, they're offered around the islands? So we, we do them uh, in two bike paths. So the Pearl Harbor bike path. So we only do it on a bike path, which a bike path is when it's totally separated from the road. Okay. Like what we have in Pearl Harbor and Alamona Beach Park. Um, so those are the two places we do them. Okay. Uh, Alamona and, Beach Park and uh, Pearl Harbor Bike. Path. And there's probably regular scheduled information on your website. Absolutely. Okay. And the last one, I just, before we take a break, there's a picture of uh, your bike ed program uh, just to finish off this idea. And there's some cakeys that were happy to, okay. to do this. And when they finish this, do they get, they get a helmet, right? When they complete the course? Yeah, uh, they, they can buy a helmet for a very low price. We pass it along at cost. Okay. Um, they do get a certificate. So they take a pledge at the end. Okay. That, uh, you know, basically I'm going to be a very safe place because I'm always going to wear a helmet as part of it. I'm always going to look before I, before I go out. I'm always going to uh, ride with the flow of traffic. Um, so 8,000 kids every year go through this program. So That's awesome. Um, oh, okay. yes. and, they, and they take the pledge. Okay. And they take the pledge. And, and they uh, have to wear a helmet under the law, right? And uh, Under 18? Under the age of 16, uh, a helmet is required by Hawaii law. Uh, everybody should wear a helmet if you're riding yes. a bike. And everyone should, yes. Everyone should. So th as you can see, we have a wonderful show today. Uh, we have to take a short break. I'm Winston Welch on the Out and About show here on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We are with... Uh, the great Alexander, uh, Daniel Alexander, <laughs> the Hawaii Bicycling League, talking about uh, this organization, all things bicycling related in our state, in our city. We'll be back in a minute, so stay tuned for more of the story. Hi guys, I'm your host Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you, and uh, aloha. Aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program airs every other Monday at 1 o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Most of my programs deal with my own life and law experience. Recently, I interviewed Alex Jempel, who I have known for over 30 years, about his voyage across the sea as a lawyer from Tokyo to Hawaii. Those are the type of stories that I like to bring and like to talk about, human stories about law and life. Aloha. Hey, we're back and we're live. I'm Winston Welch, and this is Out and About on the Think Tech Live streaming network series, talking with Daniel Alexander of the Hawaii Bicycling League. We are talking about this great organization and the fabulous people he works with and all things bicycling related in our city and state. So welcome back again and, and to the show and, and talking about this. Uh, a lot of important issues because we're dealing with safety, dealing with the road, we're dealing with people learning new activities, um, ways to get around, all kinds of stuff. And, and part of of what your organization does is advocacy. So you talked about, about some of the educational component that you have. You got classes for, for kids and for seniors and how to follow the laws. And then we got the advocacy here. So we got some things up here on the screen here and you've got um, walk bike boat, the minimum grid, uh, the, the bike parking and vision zero and safe passing bill. So tell us, uh, and protected bike lanes, tell us a little bit about these guys. Yeah, so, um, you know, bicycling, you know, it's a fun activity. It's, um, in a way, really simple. It's been around uh, for a long time now, but it, it can help us with a lot of the problems we're facing. You know, we, we like to keep it fun, but we also like to emphasize that, you know, we're facing uh, global warming. I mean, I just read the Civil Beat article about that we've had, like, the hottest 
since April, we've set a record almost every day for heat yeah. here in Hawaii. Yeah. And I think everyone cares about that when they go outside or if they don't have AC, about um, the experience they're starting to feel. And they, it could get much, much worse, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, health epi epidemics around obesity, people not getting enough physical activity. Um, so there are a lot of problems that bicycling can be part of the solution for. And the problem is that um, our world is not all built in a way that is going to encourage and drive people towards bicycling. Um, so what we really need, some of the keys to get there, um, are safe infrastructure. That's safe places for people to ride. Um, that's bike paths, protected bike lanes, bike lanes. It's where people can leave their house and they can um, be either on a low traffic street or one of those bikeways and they can get to meaningful places. And then we know from experiences elsewhere, from Copenhagen, from Portland, from Davis, California, that if you build that world, there are a lot of people that will bicycle. And um, they'll get all those wonderful benefits we were talking about and then broader uh, social benefits that come with it. Um, so a big part of our work is, is advocacy. It's trying to um, build the constituents and build the support for, for bikeways. Um, so one of the things that, that you, you mentioned, our walk, bike, vote. So every, every two years um, when we have elections, um, we do a, a candidate questionnaire where it covers both walking and bicycling issues because frankly, walking, all the things I just mentioned for bicycling, they're the same for walking. It's, it's great, great for you, it's great for the environment, but the infrastructure is not really well suited for it at this point. And safety behooves us to do something about it beyond all those things we mentioned, beyond all the, the benefits that we can reap from it. Um, so we do this questionnaire and it's basically, hey, these are meaningful things that uh, we, we think are important, um, political issues that, that need to be acted on. Mm -hmm. And we ask people that are running for governor, um, city council, um, state rep, et cetera, uh, what do you think on these issues? And we simply make those responses available um, for people to read and for them to say, hey, uh, amongst the things that I care about in the world, um, here I can read for these candidates' positions on these issues. And one of those might be the Minimum Grid Honolulu. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, so Minimum Grid Honolulu is our, our campaign to get a protected bikeway, either a bike path or a protected bike lane, uh, within a mile uh, or a half mile of everyone on Oahu. And we think that that would be really instrumental in uh, getting more people cycling, because that's what I was saying earlier, to get the interested but concerned um, majority of people cycling. We need um, those safe, those safer facilities where they're more separated from traffic. And has this all been, uh, I, I'm guessing that it has all been mapped out pretty well because we have a graphic of it coming up, but uh, how is the city coming along on that? Well, the city is making progress. Um, it's certainly not as fast as we'd like to see, but there, there is meaningful progress being, being made. Um, you know, King Street, which we talked about, has kind of created a spine um, through, through Honolulu. And um, we're starting to build on that more and more. And uh, in addition to the city, it's, it's not just the city, it's the state, because um, we have a lot of our transportation facilities um, here on Oahu and on the other islands that are, are the jurisdiction of the state. Mm -hmm. and, right, because right, on the big island, you got you know, this Circle Island yeah. Road, and obviously, uh, but they've made it pretty wide in most spaces so that you can get by more easily, but uh, you're more intrepid over there um, because just the distances are farther uh, between things. Uh, so one of these things you got here is the Vision Zero Hawaii, which is no uh, pedestrian or bicycle fatalities. Or driver. Or no driver, yeah, no right. And, and when we're calming the streets for everyone, everyone is, is safer um, as well. Yeah. So one of those things is that you have to be three feet for safer streets, something you advocated for in the past. So you have to, when you're passing a bike, you have to give her or him three feet. Yeah, you nailed it. Okay. Yeah, so um, it's, it's a really meaningful, if you're driving, uh, the most meaningful things you can do uh, towards a bicyclist is one, to be looking out for them. Of mm -hmm. course, that's number one. You need, to, you need to see them to avoid them. Yeah, so that means uh, whenever you're making a turn, you're looking in your mirrors. Um, whenever you're, say, making a left turn, you're looking, hey, is, is there a bicyclist, say, hide it, hidden behind um, that car that's approaching? So yeah. when I make my turn, they might be there. So looking is number one. And then number two is giving plenty of space. So when you're passing one, someone, um, you know, six inches is, is not a safe distance because, frankly, that person could wobble. Yeah. Frankly, you as the driver, you, you might not be, um, your perception of that distance might not be totally accurate, and yeah. you might actually veer a little bit further. So three feet is that minimum safe distance, and it's that buffer zone that um, if either the bicyclist or the driver moves a little bit, it, they can still pass safely. And, uh, and this is, uh, I think, uh, exemplified that the need for this is uh, you have uh, the Zach Monago 
uh, bicycle way uh, in memory of a, of a young man that was uh, killed riding his bike. And so uh, his parents have uh, made the tragedy into something where they making a teachable moment and sharing with people, hey, we gotta we got to up our game here and make yeah. it safer for folks. So uh, Zachary Monago, uh, upstanding kid in every way, where, uh, in every way a great person. I didn't know him personally, but in every way a great person, 18 years old, going to HPU, um, and uh, on a bicycle ride, he, he was hit. He was hit by a car, and, and he was killed. Um, and uh, you know, one of the so he was a freshman at HPU, and in that freshman semester, uh, he wrote a paper that said, "We need more bike lanes." He said, I, "I ride, and I think it's great, but I don't feel safe often on the streets. I feel like um, I'm in danger." And if there were bike lanes, if there were dedicated space where that's where the bicycles have a safe place to be, that I would feel safer and that other people would feel safer and more people would ride. And so um, since his death, um, we've worked with his family, with the Monago family, um, to try to um, perpetuate safety. To, um, e every year we have an event, the Zachary Monago Ride in Paradise. And we always try to get at the word out as much as possible about Hey, drivers, look out for bicyclists. This is, frankly, this is someone's family member out there. Anyone you pass is someone's family member, and it's real. Okay. You may be saving a second because you're going five miles faster than you should be. Um, you know, that, that has meaningful impacts on people, and it, it could have a really, really tragic impact. I, I think those signs do help a lot and, 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 and just humanize everything. And so out of this, we've got some protected bike lanes. I think we can see that in the next slide uh, here in Oahu. And, and as people go online, they can see that the solid lines are super protected. The dotted lines are more bike uh, uh, lanes, share bars, and that share, share, Sharos. Sharos, yes. And, and we're looking to get more of these. I think the next one will show uh, that we want to get one on Pensacola. And that's an artist rendering of how that would look. And there's plenty of space on Pensacola for that. Yeah. Um, and then to get to your last thing, you have, uh, or I'm sorry, we have the Leeward Bikeway next, which you want to get a, uh, bike around uh, bike path around the leeward side as well, and then an event coming up. Your big fundraiser of the year is the Honolulu Century Ride uh, coming up September 29th. You said you had 350 volunteers helping yeah. you. How many people participate in this, and how do people get information about it? Yeah, so um, all those bikeways you mentioned. I mean, that's that's what our work. That that's part of the core of our work is trying to get more bikeways, more safe places for people to ride. Another part is events. It's creating a safe environment. Um, so you mentioned the Honolulu Century Ride, and we have our more cakey family, uh, more casual ride-oriented ori Aloha Fun Ride, uh -huh. same day. Um, it just occurs straight, slightly later. A little bit shorter. Um, a lot of it shorter. We got three rides of five, nine, and 18 yeah, so miles. Okay. The day, anywhere from five miles to 100 miles. Okay. Uh, you can participate. We call it the best day to ride. Um, it's, it's Hawaii's largest cycling event. We try to make it as safe as possible. We have HPD out there in numbers. Uh, we have lots of signs, course marshals. We have uh, cone lanes where it's possible. Just trying to make it as safe as possible um, to give the opportunity for people to cycle and, and have fun. Um, but the event is also a critical fundraiser for us, so it, it ties back into those other work we're doing, our advocacy and our education that, that need that, that, uh, that money to help drive it forward. Um, so the, the day is about celebrating bicycling and getting people out. It's about perpetuating our work forward. So very important day coming up this Saturday, the 29th. The Sunday. I'm sorry, Sunday. Sunday, the 29th. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and they can find out more information about this. Register on your website hbl.org. Yep, that's the one. Why are you okay. bicycling at hbl.org? Well, uh, obviously, I think this is something where we can uh, have a lot more stuff to discuss. I hope you'll come back again and we can talk about other issues and maybe delve more deeply into some of these if you would uh, yeah. be so kind. And uh, unfortunately, we are out of time and have to wrap this up. Uh, Winston Welch, this is Out and About on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. It's been our great pleasure talking with Alexander. I'm sorry, Daniel Alexander. You. Got two, you, everybody does that, I know, but uh, Daniel is a great guy, co-executive director of the Hawaii Bicycling League, and we've been uh, hoping that you got something out of this. Go to their website, hbl.org. Thank you for tuning in. We welcome your feedback, and thanks to our broadcast engineer, Robert McLean, our floor manager, Haley Ikeda, and Eric Kalander, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. We will see you every other Monday here. 
on Big Tech Roundabout. Thank you so much for being my guest again. Thank we'll you, Winston. You okay. Yeah. Aloha, everyone. Thank you.